Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about five o'clock shadows and stubble uh, and bald heads. Things that are very common on heads like this, which this is a space marine head. Uh, and we're going to talk about how we get the, the look of stubble uh, both into his lower jaw and uh, add some interesting tone to his bald head there. Uh, so space marine heads are obviously lots of fun. They often have really, you know, interesting and humorous expressions. Uh, and as you can see, this is painted. That is to say, I completed the rest of the paint job uh, on the face, so it's ready to go. I think he looks pretty nice, so he's he's ready to be angry in his armor. But we're gonna we're gonna spice him up a little bit. So what you need to do to do a nice five o'clock shadow is actually something that is going to seem strange and that is you need some kind of very dark blue this can be any kind of uh deep blue color so you can uh if you've got something like let's say a dollar Rowney Payne's gray ink this is perfect if you don't happen to have this particular ink um you can use a very deep 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 navy blue paint uh if you don't have that you can always use something like uh, take, say, your Nolan Oil, put it out on a palette, mix it with a little bit of blue shade, um, you know, something like a Drakenhof Nightshade, mix the two of those together, and then thin it down. So that, that's the first step. You've got to make a real thin concoction. So here what I've done is I've taken my Payne's Gray and I've thinned it out with a whole bunch of Master Medium from Green Stuff World. Okay. Uh, you don't have to use medium. You could use water or any other kind of acrylic thinner. This is just the one I happen to want to use. Uh, now, what I get then is a mix that is very watery. And as always, whenever we have a really watery mix on our brush, we of course start by wicking it off into a paper towel because we want it to be under control. Any thin glaze, we're always going to do that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to test it on the back of our hand. And so you can see here, that's about the coverage I get out of that. Real, real light. Okay. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take our face and we're going to basically just pull that color across his chin. And it's so thin, it will kind of naturally fall into the recesses. And we're also going to do the same thing on the side of his head here. You notice that this is a very controlled glaze. Nothing's pooling. Okay. And then we're just going to let that dry. Now, when you go this thin, you'll notice that the very first coat of it doesn't really have much of an effect. It gives a little bit of a darker tone, and the reason we work this thin is because then we can start with, say, just the simple, like, he shaved this morning, and we really want it to be just a 5 o'clock shadow, the slightest hint of that color in there, okay? Turning what would otherwise be a fairly warm face a little bit cold. Now. If we want to go a little farther, we can go a little farther by just simply applying another glaze. So once again, I've wicked it on my brush. Once again, I'll test on the back of my hand. Looks good. Okay. And then we're just going to go ahead and bring that down. You notice how I'm focusing on the side of the cheek, the lower part of the jaw. You can do the upper part of the lip as well, but you don't have to. The reason it's important to have your highlighting done beforehand is because you want that to show through. When you're working this thin with, with this trans level of transparency, then what happens is uh, anything you put underneath is going to show through. So if you have something light, it will generally show through the light. So you can see like, for example, the front of his little chin, he's got a very pronounced sort of chin butt, uh, is still quite lighter than the rest, although it's now been tinted into this colder color. 
now you're starting to see the actual change of where it looks like we've got a little bit of a shadow there. Okay. But again, we can keep going farther. So let's let's give him one more. As always, every time I'm wicking and every time I'm testing on the back of my hand. And the reason I'm doing that every time is because the reality is this is a very, this paint job is very done and I don't want to sit here and uh, suddenly change something that I put a fair amount of time into where I have to go back and fix a lot. So an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Uh, I'm not going to do the sides of his head again. I think that has a nice shadow on it already. We'll run a single one up over the top of his lip, which is very slight. So he's got a little bit of that going over the lip. I generally do the top of the lip with less than I do the lower areas. Not because they actually have, there's actually would be less stubble there, but because you generally want the lip to be more pronounced. And so now you can see how we've got a really nice uh, image of kind of stubble there. Now the cool part is you can always go back and you can take say a little bit of that, uh, that dark shade. We can actually mix it with a little bit of whatever flesh color we used. So we get something like that. And then we could take this area of his chin we want it to be a little more pronounced. And we can come back in and actually kind of re-highlight that up. Maybe the same with the side of his lip there that's facing the light. So you can still work over top of it rather easy and you can see now how that gives us that nice transition. Okay? So, there you go. I mean, that's really all there is to it. This is a simple one, folks, because this technique is so easy and so fun to do. Um, it's such a final, simple touch to uh, to doing a, a face and really selling the illusion. I love putting this kind of stuff on a miniature because it just has a, a cool finishing effect to it. So there you go. That's uh, that's how you do your your stubble your five o'clock shadows and your buzzed bald heads to make him look like that. So it looks like he's got a little bit of a little bit of a shadow there where he, he has a little bit of hair that he still has to actually shave down. But all in all, hope you enjoyed this. I know this is a very simple one, but it's something I've gotten a couple requests for. Uh, so I do hope you enjoy this. Uh, if you did, hey, give it a like. Uh, subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. If you've got suggestions for uh, future videos, feel free to drop those down in the comments. Uh, always love to see suggestions. If you've got questions, of course, feel free to drop those down there as well. But as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one, and we'll see you next time.